morning we are in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today we're going to explore this desert region like we did before back in Antigua. We have some interesting things to see like the London Bridge and the Hoover Dam. So let's go and investigate this region of the United States desert. the actual service and today we are at the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam is located on the border of Arizona and Nevada and creates Lake Mead which is one of the largest man-made lakes by volume in the United States. The Hoover Dam began construction in 1931 and was completed in 1936. At the time the Hoover Dam was the largest concrete dam project to have ever been attempted. Sadly, over a hundred workers were killed as a result of the project. The dam was named after the 31st President of the United States, Herbert Hoover. The dam was built for two primary functions, flood control for the Colorado River and energy production. The Hoover Dam's hydroelectric power system generates 4.2 terawatts of power annually. That is remarkable. The site is also an icon for American industry and accomplishment. Here you can see the Mike O'Callaghan Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge. Construction for this bridge started in 2005 and was completed in 2010 and connects Route 93 over the Colorado River. It also provides a pedestrian walkway that yields some amazing photo opportunities of the dam. Today here I have a, a couple of very nice people from Australia. Um, please uh, tell us your names and where you're from in Australia. I'm Liz, and we're from Western Australia. And, and wh wh what well, city? Uh, from, from Perth. 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 Yep, yep, yep. Very well. Now, the question uh, that really perplexed me is, how long does it take by car to travel from the West Coast to the East Coast? Best part of a week. Yeah. yeah. A week? Assuming yeah. you're going to fall in and sleep overnight. Yeah, yeah. And keep to the speed limit. <laughs> so, so are there interstates or very large roads that are like freeways here in the United States? Uh, yes, we have one huge long road called the Air Highway. Oh, yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And there's nothing there except wombats, kangaroos and all kangaroos. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone's dying to know. Um, the United States stereotype about Australians, uh, but tell us the parts that are completely not true. Um, well, are there really kangaroos everywhere? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, That's and crocodiles. Really they're not running down our street, but they're within... They're in our cemeteries. Uh, yeah, they're, and our golf and yeah, courses. They love all the golf courses and the cemeteries because they eat all the flowers after everyone's left, after they've died. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, and uh, they love green grass, so they're anywhere that we've got green grass. And, and do you really call them joeys? Is that no, the, the joey is a baby. A joey is a baby? Yes, and it sits in its mother's little pocket. Oh, and what do you call an adult kangaroo? Kangaroo. A kangaroo. <laughs> well, that's simple. <laughs> and a big one if you're oh, a boy is a boomer. Uh, it's a boomer. A, boomer. a big white boomer, yeah. yes, yeah. And we get them from white colours to a dark, dark red or a grey. And um, what else? Uh, yeah, we call them roos. Uh, and do you think the movie Crocodile Dundee is absolutely ridiculous? Um, actually, a lot of it's quite true. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. We, we've been to the pub where they did all his, uh, well, he was his tour office and uh, yeah, he's a bit of a dag in Australia. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and uh, tell me, do you actually drink Fosters in Australia? No. No. Doesn't no, exist. Nobody absolutely, drinks Fosters. Nobody positively drinks. not. You can find it in England, but you can't find it in Australia unless you look really hard. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for the wonderful information. Hopefully we will we will squash ignorance with, with people like absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you, they, Captain Whitby. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Good old Malcolm Weatherby, at your service, reporting from Lake Havasu, Arizona. And behind me, believe it or not, is the London Bridge. Yes, you heard me, the London Bridge. This is living proof that our timeline is seriously messed up. So, apparently in 1967, a gentleman by the name of Robert P. McCulloch purchased the London Bridge from the City of London, numbered every brick, 
transported it over to the United States here in Lake Havasu and reassembled it. There it is. It was finished construction in 1971 and now is a tourist destination in what is a very lively city that it focuses around water sports. This is also a great celebration of American and English heritage. As you can see on the bridge, there are both uh, the Union Jack and the Stars and Stripes are flying. So let's go reconnoiter the bridge and see what mysteries lie within. And here I am atop the bridge here. It looks like they're doing some routine maintenance as a bridge this age would probably require a lot. So I came into this, uh, this public house uh, for a little respite and I met these interesting people. This man is a, is a cowboy gunman, or at least he does that in his off time. Um, please, uh, what is your name and uh, uh, tell us your story. Pete Johnson. Yeah. Pete Johnson. And this is my wife, Debbie Johnson. Debbie Johnson. Those almost sound like Hollywood names. Well, could be, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the thing that we do is the Wild West Shootout, and we're from Montana, and we've been doing it. There's a little town, I don't know if you ever heard of the town Bannock. That I'm not familiar. No. Okay, it's a ghost town out there in Montana. It was going to be the first capital of Montana, but it didn't turn out that way. Oh, really? About Henry Plummer. Yes. He's one of the notorious uh, outlaws that was the sheriff of Bannock. Uh, okay. And he uh, got hung. He was, well, see, okay, to make a long story short, there was a guy in there named Clubford George who was yeah. a book repairman. And he would learn and hear about the robberies that were coming through the town. Uh -huh. I mean, the, the stagecoach was coming through the town, they were hauling gold. So there would be a scarf that they all wore, like a, a neckerchief. Right. And they'd have a knot on it. And they turned the knot one way, that meant there was a shipment of gold. Oh. And if the knot was turned the other way, there was no gold on the stagecoach. Wow. So when they would leave the, the little stagecoach, would come into the to Bannock and leave, there was a rock out there that was called Robert's Roost, Robert's, Robert's Roost, and they would wait out there as the stagecoach would go by, and then they would rob the stagecoach. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. The entirety of the British Empire thanks you for watching. Please leave comments below so I may improve future educational videos. God save the Queen.